Well, this is Dr. Grande. Today's video is about Joseph Smith Jr., the individual who founded the Church of the Latter-day Saints. Just a reminder that I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. There you will find several more videos recorded in this studio, many of which have a behind-the-scenes theme to them. So getting started, I'll look at the background, and then I'll move to my analysis of Joseph Smith Jr. Joseph Smith Jr. was born on December 23, 1805, in Sharon, Vermont. He was one of 11 children born to Lucy Smith and Joseph Smith Sr. His father was a farmer and a merchant, both of Smith's parents believed they had received communications from God, and they indicated they had visions. Smith had to have surgery when he was seven years old. He had a bone infection. Now, back in those times, they weren't real big on things like anesthesia, so it was probably incredibly painful. It took him several years to recover. The family had some hard times financially, and they moved to a farm in western New York. By age 12, Smith developed an interest in religion although initially he was quite confused about religion because different religious beliefs had made conflicting claims. In 1820, when he was about 15 years old, he claimed that when he was praying in the woods, he received a vision. This would become known as the first vision. God and Jesus Christ appeared to him and informed him that his sins were forgiven and all of the churches of that day had turned away from the gospel. Three years later, Smith was praying, and he was visited by an angel he referred to as Moroni, who supplied him with a location of various items, including a book made of golden plates. Ostensibly, they were buried in a hill near his home. I guess that was fairly convenient. Smith tried to retrieve the plates, but the angel stopped him. He returned to this hill for several years, but continued not having success getting those plates. To supplement the income of the family, who was struggling financially at the time, Smith started charging people as a treasure seeker. He would be hired to look for lost items. He did this using what's referred to as a seer stone. I get this feeling that if anybody believed they needed to hire somebody like Smith or that he could actually help them, their own brain should be the first item on their list of things that need to be found. In 1827, Smith would marry a woman named Emma Hale. He took her to that hill where the plates were reportedly buried, and he claimed he found them. Convenient for Smith, the angel told him he could not show the plates to anyone. It had to be his little secret. He was to translate what was on the plates and publish it. Even though the writing on the plates was in some version of Egyptian, Smith was able to read them without a problem. He left the area after people started looking for the plates, so he talked about these plates, he said he had them, and then people wanted them. He and his wife moved to what is now Susquehanna County, Pennsylvania. He continued translating what was on the plates. He received financial assistance from a neighbor of his named Martin Harris. Now, Harris started to grow suspicious, and he wanted to take the manuscript and show it to a few members of his family. Smith let him take it. It was 116 pages. Harris ended up losing the book. I wonder if Smith ever said something like, how am I going to make all that stuff up again, only to catch himself and offer a correction, oh, I meant translate, translate that stuff. The angel punished Smith by removing the golden plates from him and removing his ability to translate the words. However, in September of 1828, the angel returned the plates. Smith resumed with his translation efforts. The completed work was titled The Book of Mormon and would be published in March of 1830. Not even two weeks later, Smith and his followers started the Church of Christ, establishing three branches in New York. Several people claimed that they had seen the golden plates. Men who had become known as the three witnesses said an angel showed them the plates, and they heard the voice of God confirming that the translation on the plates was authentic. Later on, another group of men called the Eight Witnesses said that Smith had shown them the plates. 
Founding a new religion came with a few problems. Smith was arrested and tried for being a disorderly person. Although he was acquitted, a mob started chasing him. He went on the run. A few of Smith's followers started saying that they, too, were receiving revelations. They were trying to join in the party here. In response, Smith declared that only he had the ability to produce scripture for the church. He wasn't going to let anybody in on the action. In 1831, Smith ended up in Ohio. He kept constructing the religion. For example, he established a priesthood. The followers of the religion, who were called Mormons, entered into various conflicts with people in the community. Many people weren't happy about their religious beliefs. In 1832, a mob physically attacked Smith. They tarred and feathered him. Armed conflicts would follow. Smith changed the name of the church to the Church of Latter-day Saints. I'll just use the initials LDS when referring to this church. Smith would move to Caldwell County, Missouri in 1838. More violence followed between Mormons and non-Mormons. In October of 1838, 17 Mormons were killed by various residents of Missouri in what was referred to as the Hans Hill Massacre. LDS surrendered and agreed to leave Missouri. Smith was arrested and brought before a military court. He was sentenced to die, but the brigadier general of the Missouri militia would not carry out the order. As it happens, he used to be Smith's attorney. Smith was sent to Liberty, Missouri to await trial for treason. In 1838, with the help of other people, Smith escaped and ended up in Illinois, where he would establish a new city named Nauvoo. Under the city charter, he was able to prevent himself from being extradited to Missouri. So the way they wrote the rules said that he didn't have to go anywhere. In 1841, Smith introduced the idea of plural marriage and ran it by a few of the other higher-ups at LDS. He claimed that an angel first told him about plural marriage in 1831, but he resisted the idea. He didn't want to get involved with that. Smith eventually would take on about 40 wives after he said the angel returned and this time threatened to kill him unless he took on additional wives. Sounds like the relationship with that angel was growing a bit tense. I wonder if this was the origin of the somewhat unpopular an angel made me do it defense. In 1842, after the governor of Missouri was shot and wounded by an unknown attacker, he ordered Smith's extradition, regardless of what the laws were in Nauvoo. The governor believed that Smith had ordered the shooting. Specifically, he thought that Smith's bodyguard carried it out. That bodyguard was later acquitted for that crime. The extradition order was abandoned, but then in 1943, the governor tried to extradite Smith again, this time for treason. Smith was arrested by two law enforcement officers, but before they could get out of Illinois and make it to Missouri, a group of Mormons intercepted them. The Nauvoo Municipal Court released Smith. Even though Smith was free, a number of other leaders at LDS were not happy with him. He proposed marriage to the wives of a few of those leaders. This caused a little bit of tension and strife. Eventually, some of the leaders formed their own competing church and arranged for Smith to be indicted for polygamy and perjury. Smith supported an order from the Nauvoo City Council to destroy a newspaper. He was trying to control what was being released about him. Worried about the backlash from his own behavior, he mobilized the Nauvoo Legion, the city's military force. Smith was arrested for inciting a riot and treason and held in jail in Carthage, Illinois. This takes us to June 27, 1844. A mob stormed the jail and shot Smith's brother, killing him. Smith returned fire using a pistol and was shot multiple times as he tried to escape out of a window. He would die a few months later. He was 38 years old. After his death, Brigham Young would take over as the leader of LDS and move the church to Utah. Now moving to my analysis. To many Mormons, Smith was a great prophet, a critical figure in their belief system. It's worth noting that many Latter-day Saints have abandoned some of the concepts brought up by Joseph Smith, like polygamy, and not all of them believed that he was a good guy. Now, to many other people, Smith was a fraud. He was unsuccessful in various endeavors, so he decided to fabricate a series of so-called revelations. Let's take a look at what could be happening in a situation like this. What are the possibilities here? 
Well, I suppose, technically speaking, Smith could be telling the truth. He could have seen all the things that he claimed to have seen. I doubt it, but I wasn't there in the mid-1800s, although sometimes I do feel that old. Moving on to more likely possibilities brings us to the world of mental illness. But before I get to that, I want to review his potential personality profile. Here we see high openness to experience. He certainly seemed creative and broke from tradition. Low conscientiousness. He was irresponsible and impulsive. We see high extroversion. He was assertive and sensation-seeking. He once said that excitement has almost become the essence of my life. When that dies away, I feel almost lost. We see low agreeableness. He was not straightforward or modest. He was antagonistic and competitive. For example, when the other leaders started getting revelations, he stepped in and said, no, I'm the only person who can get those. We also see above-average neuroticism. He was angry, depressed, and unable to resist temptation. Now, returning to mental health, there have been many theories about what could have been going on with Joseph Smith. I'll go through a few of them here and then offer my thoughts. I'll talk about the theory that I think is most likely true. The first theory, he developed PTSD from the surgeries he had for that bone infection. Those, again, were done without anesthetic. I'm sure they were horribly painful, and they had to have some impact on him. It makes sense that he could have had PTSD. It's not clear, though, how this would explain his later behavior. The second theory is that he had schizophrenia, this would explain the behavior that appears to be consistent with hallucinations and delusions. But Smith seemed far too organized to have schizophrenia. Often with schizophrenia, we see disorganized behavior. It's usually fairly obvious, although, of course, this was before it was ever named. So if people had seen it, they wouldn't have known what to call it. But I'm sure they would have described it in a way where we could perhaps align it to the definition of schizophrenia. And again, we don't see those descriptions. The third theory is that the hallucinations and delusions, if in fact that's what he had, could be explained by bipolar disorder. This would explain the certain times when he appeared manic and other times when he appeared to be depressed. I think a good argument can be made for this theory, but there's just not enough information to know with any level of certainty. This takes us to the fourth theory. This is the one that I think is the most likely, but again, there's no way to know for sure. This theory says that Joseph Smith was essentially a psychopathic and narcissistic con artist. He became a cult leader to ensure that he had access to power, money, and women. Let's take a look at the evidence supporting this theory. Joseph Smith appeared to have many of the symptoms of psychopathy. He was charismatic, manipulative, a pathological liar, grandiose. He did not accept responsibility for his behavior, and he committed many crimes. He also appeared to be narcissistic. Among other characteristics, like being arrogant and having a sense of entitlement, he had many fantasies of incredible power and success. For example, he once ran for president of the United States. He made himself the mayor of a city that he created. He put himself in charge of his own private army in that city. He believed that LDS would eventually expand to all of North and South America, and he would be king. He declared that he should take as many wives as he wanted, and to some extent he fulfilled that fantasy, again about 40 wives. Joseph Smith reminds me of a number of alleged cult leaders, including David Koresh and Keith Raniere. Both of these individuals wanted to have access to all the women they could get. It was part of their religious doctrine or belief system. David Koresh declared that men in his cult needed to allow him to marry their wives and those men Agreed, although that makes no sense, they did. Keith Raniere built a secret society of women he referred to as slaves. Smith knew that he was making the best investment of his time when he was targeting people who were gullible enough to believe his claims, and he could do away with those who were not. He wasn't going to waste time on people that would not believe him or follow his orders. He understood that for a cult leader to be successful, it's really all about target selection. They don't have to convince a large number of people to join them. They have to convince the right people to join them. I think what happened in the case of Joseph Smith was that an ordinary low-level con artist who was almost killed several times, it's really amazing he survived, managed to manipulate enough people to reach a critical mass. His movement started to take 
a life of its own. Those are my thoughts on Joseph Smith Jr. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.